Hey fam, what's up? It's April here. Today, I wanted to discuss something with you. I was up at 3am last night, arguing with someone on Twitter who was saying some very harmful things about diversity and thinking that people shouldn't have labels, people should just be people. She also said some very harmful things about uh, fantasy books not needing diverse characters and such, and I got a bit upset. I do want to preface this by saying that I am a white, middle-class, cisgender woman living in Australia, so the only time I've really felt a little bit marginalized or discriminated against is because of the fact that I have mental illnesses and because I'm a woman. I mean, I'm not saying that those things aren't important things, but um, th this does come from a, a privileged perspective. And I honestly, I really did try to see where she was coming from. I really tried to understand and in a sense I did understand where she was coming from in the fact that, you know, she sort of wanted all people to just be people and be equal but that's a harmful way of thinking about things because yes, people are people but there's lots of different types of people and put, attaching certain labels to people isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's so important for people to be represented in the books that they read and that's what Own Voices is all about. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, I want to direct you to Whitney from Witty Novels. Uh, she recently posted a really amazing video. If you watch one video this year on YouTube, let it be that video. The Own Voices movement was started by a Dutch author called Corinne Dalvis. She was basically expressing uh, that people deserve to be represented in literature and that we should seek out books that are written about marginalized people by people who have themselves been marginalized by the same thing. So in essence you're getting an authentic piece of literature about something important. Because let's be honest you're going to get so much more out of a story that is written by someone who has felt and lived those experiences that are represented in the book. I'm not going to go on and on and on about how I believe that Own Voices is so important because I think that's pretty self-explanatory, um, hopefully, <laughs> obviously not to some people, um, but if you want to know more about it and why it's so important I definitely recommend you go watch Whitney's video. Here's where I kind of want to discuss myself in regards to own voices. Now like I said, I'm a white cisgender female um, and I don't experience a lot of what other marginalized people experience. But growing up, I did have severe anxiety basically since I was a baby and throughout my life I've had serious bouts of anxiety and depression that have resulted in agoraphobia and if I had that source of books with characters in it, like me, from people who've experienced what I experienced, I would have felt so much less alone and like I wasn't abnormal or weird. Especially as a young child, not having um, even picture books to understand why I was the only one screaming and sobbing while my mum left me at school every morning and why I was feeling this gut roiling feeling every single day. But like I said, um, that's only one tiny thing and reading Own Voices books about anxiety and depression and agoraphobia for me is really important because I feel represented. But I want to read Own Voices stories from other marginalized people and, and read about people's experiences that, you know, I know nothing about. Because for me, reading is no longer about just reading because it's a good story. For me, reading is all about learning and growing. Simply reading Own Voices stories makes you a more accepting, empathetic person in society and we need those people in society to keep moving forward and to keep being progressive. And at the same time, these people, these marginalized people, deserve to be represented and deserve to read about characters just like them. I kind of wish I could go back and reread everything that I've ever read um, prior to the last few months because I felt like I was reading from a very privileged perspective and 
I wasn't even thinking about diversity except for the rare occasion I'd search for books about anxiety. Um, but now I actively seek out books that feature diversity and feature people who aren't like me to learn about people and cultures and different ways of life. And I also do research on the authors. Are these people that I want to support? Are these people who support diversity? And I'm very tempted to go back on my Goodreads and just unrate all of the books I've previously rated because I feel like they're, those ratings are now untrue because I wasn't looking for these things. I wasn't recognizing problematic elements and I feel like it's really important for those things to be pointed out. So I may actually do that. I might go back on Goodreads and unrate a lot of books um, because I feel like the ratings are no longer true. I really, really hope you guys look into this movement, you research this movement, research books and authors and constantly learn things and grow. Last night at 3am as well I made an own voices shelf on Goodreads um, and I added a whole bunch of books um, but if you have any recommendations for books that aren't already on that shelf please leave them down in the comments or recommend me books on Twitter or Goodreads or whatever because I really really want to aim to read more Own Voices books. But for now, I have 11 books that I want to recommend to you guys that are Own Voices. Some of them are memoirs and non-fiction, so I will start with those, starting with probably the most influential book I've read all year, and that is Talking to My Country by Stan Grant. This is especially relevant to Australians. Um, I recommend that every single human living in Australia reads this book. This is Stan Grant's personal account um, in regards to race in Australia. He is an Aboriginal man, he is a Wiradjuri man. I'll read you a little passage about what inspired Stan Grant to write this. Um, in July 2015, as the debate over Adam Goods being booed at AFL games raged and got ever more heated and ugly, Stan Grant wrote a short but powerful piece for The Guardian that went viral, not only in Australia, but right around the world. His was a personal, passionate and powerful response to racism in Australia, which related the sorrow, shame, anger and hardship of being an Indigenous man. Stan Grant was lucky enough to find an escape route through education, becoming one of our leading journalists. He spent many years outside Australia, working in Asia, the Middle East, Europe and Africa, a time that liberated him and gave him a unique perspective on Australia. We didn't know Adam Goods is an Indigenous um, Australian footballer, and there was a lot of controversy going around. He was being booed at games and I just, I think it is so important to know and understand what has happened in this country and what has been done to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Australia has a horrible, horrible history, um, but Stan Grant's book brought tears to my eyes. It was so beautifully written and so honest and I recommend for everybody to read this. You will get something out of this no matter where you live. We have In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. This is all about Yeonmi's escape from North Korea and falling into human trafficking in China. This is absolutely amazing and horrifying. Prozac Nation by Elizabeth Wurzel. I tabbed so many things because I have never related to a book more in my life. This is about Elizabeth Wurzel's struggle with mental illness in the 60s and the lack of help and the stigma around being mentally ill. We have We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Chimamanda is one of the most extraordinary women I've ever come across. She grew up in Nigeria and she is constantly fighting for women's rights. And this little wonderful book is adapted from her TED talk. The last nonfiction um, is something that I often read when I'm feeling down and it is Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. These are hilarious illustrated stories um, mainly about Ali Brosh uh, suffering from depression and anxiety. There are also some hilarious stories in here that never fail to make me laugh. All right, moving on to fiction. Homegoing by Ya Jesse is literally a masterpiece. The author grew up in Ghana and lives in America. And this follows two half-sisters in Ghana who don't know of each other's existence, but every pair of chapters follows their descendants all the way up until the present day. 
and the different lives that these descendants have lived. And the two sisters have very different stories to start off with. One is sold into slavery and the other marries a slave trader. I learnt so much from this. It's intense and it's heartbreaking. Um, it obviously follows the colonization of Ghana and the slave trade, even racism today over in America. And it is just, honestly, it is a masterpiece. And lastly, I have a small selection of young adult books that I'd love to recommend to you guys. The first one is a recent read and is one that I can strongly relate to. It is Under Rose Tainted Skies by Louise Gornall. And this follows our main character who has severe anxiety that results in agoraphobia, which is something I've suffered from multiple times in the past. And this is truly a phenomenal depiction of mental illness but it's also an adorable story all right next is an author i discovered this year and i absolutely fell in love with her books it's randa abdel fatah no surprise if you are familiar with my channel um this is when michael met mina which was released this year and this is does my head look big in this and randa is an australian human rights activist and her books mainly follow muslim protagonists and the struggles that they deal with living in modern australia i'll leave my book review for this linked up here if you want to watch it and the wrap up where I rave about this for like five minutes up here because these are phenomenal books and lastly we have an extremely well-known author now in the YA community and that is Nicola Yoon. Nicola Yoon grew up in Jamaica and she now lives in the United States with her Korean husband and they have a beautiful child. She is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Everything Everything came out last year and was one of my favorites and The Sun is also a star recently came out in November and it follows a girl and her family who are about to be deported back to Jamaica in 12 hours and the story follows her meeting a Korean American boy and sort of trying to reverse her and her family's situation over these 12 hours. I have a review up for this one and I think I have a written review up for this one. If I do, I will leave the links in the description to any and all of the reviews about these books that I talk about in this video. So those are just a small amount of my own voices recommendations that I have for you guys. If you have any rec recommendations for me, please leave them down in the comments. But that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you soon with a new one. Goodbye.